Welcome, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about seller concessions, also known as seller contributions. Yeah, the contributions, the seller, like that actually sounds great. The seller is actually giving you something. What are they? How much are they? Can they, are they a thousand? Or are they a hundred thousand? All right, let's get into it. This is for informational purposes only. This is not financial advice. And remember, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. We'll get right back to you with any questions that you have in those comments. And okay, so what are seller concessions? The answer is pretty simple. They are the fun, they are funds that the seller gives to the home buyer, which can be used to pay for the buyer's closing costs, prepaid taxes, insurance, interest, and other miscellaneous costs. Yeah, and a lot of people think, oh, that's just free money. No, these aren't your folks just giving you like money. No, the seller's gonna wanna get something in exchange for a concession. So if they give you a $3,000 concession, they're typically gonna be you know, getting that in the purchase price. So do you want it in a reduced purchase price or do you want it in a concession? Concessions are great because it's money that you can use for your closing costs. A lot of people are having to focus just on that down payment. Yeah. And they don't, ha you know, they don't have down payment plus plus these closing costs. Every loan has these, so it's a great tool to use. Okay, so good segue here. A lot of people will ask, can the seller, can the seller's concession be used, you know, to towards the down payment? The answer is no. You can't have the seller pay for your down payment or even contribute towards it. Yeah, and yeah, and, and it, it makes sense. Think mm -hmm. about it. That if, you know, with all this regulation, regulations going up in this world, they want to make sure that the down payments don't get diluted. So if you have a five percent down payment and the seller actually paid for a percent and a half, well, doesn't that mean that you're only paying three and a half percent down? That's right. So they don't want these seller con concessions used for the down payment. So it has to come from your savings or a gift. Well, a lot of the loans programs will allow a gift depending on certain circumstances. Um, anyway, and why a gift? Like, like if, you, if savings makes sense, but a gift is not, you know, why is a gift well, allowed yeah, and yeah. not a seller concession yeah, towards yeah. down payment? Exact same reason. It's because the down payment would not be a down payment if you got a loan from mom and dad. Oh, so actually you're telling me that your down payment's only three and a half percent and then you have a one and a half percent loan from mom and dad? Doesn't work. Right. It needs to be a firm down payment percentage. Yes. And it's a gift, not a loan from mom and dad. If dad, you know, he'll, he, if, if you, are going to think about you know going into default on the loan, he's going to find you. Yeah. You know, what happened to my money? That's right. I helped you out with this investment. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, the seller concession cannot be used for the down payment. Oh, and also, I'll say too, is that because the parents are on the other side of the transaction and they're not the seller, what they don't want is for sellers and buyers to be getting together and kind of doing funny business. Like, hey, if you buy my home for a little bit more, why don't I kick you? No, yeah, they don't want any true. of that. So the parents are clearly on the buying side and they will allow those gifts. That's right. The old good old mortgage fraud that we saw about uh, 14 years ago. Yep. So that was very common. Okay, so are there limitations to the seller concessions? Answer is yes, it's not unlimited. And so let's look at this. There are three loan programs that we that most people get, and I say most, about 95% of home buyers are getting a conventional loan, FHA, or VA loan. Right. Conventional loans. If you look for primary residences or second homes, the seller concession is dependent or determined by the amount of down payment. If the buyer is putting more than 10% down, or sorry, less than 10% down, the seller contribution is 3%. That's mm -hmm. the max. Mm -hmm. And if they're putting between you know 10% and 25%, then it goes up double to 6%. And if you're actually putting 25% or more, it actually goes up another 3%. So it's a total of 9%. Yes. And if it's an investment property, which conventional loans allow them investment properties, it doesn't matter what down payment you put, whether it's 20% down or 80% down, the seller can only give a max contribution of 2%. Of 2%. And again, if people are wondering, I don't know how many people are wondering, why are these percentages you know, you know, increasing or, or changing? Again, is to kind of protect everyone against the funny business, which is if you're having trouble coming up with your down payment and a seller were to give you 9% towards you know, closing costs, just even saying that sounds kind of funny. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So again, yeah. depending, you know, the more skin you have in the game, the more that the banks will allow the seller to give you. Okay, VA loans, very simple. VA loans allow, you You know, you, you can put zero down if you want on a VA loan. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter if you put zero down or 50% down, 
the maximum seller concession is 4%. And, and, re and re yep. And okay. remember, mm -hmm. uh, there are no second homes and, aren't, and there are no investment properties with a VA loan. You can turn a VA loan into an investment property if you've had your primary for a while and you're buying a new primary, but on a purchase basis, it's only for primary. Yes. just And the same thing for FHA, just like the VA loan, it's only for primary residences and any down payment. The minimum is 3.5% for the FHA program, but it- the maximum seller concession is not dependent or just it's fixed at 6%. Right. And FHA is a great product. It has benefits over the conventional. And this is one of those benefits. Look, you can put three and a half percent down and you can get almost double that, you know, with a seller concession. You can use that to buy down your, your interest rate. Even though FHA already has great interest rates, you can buy down further and you can pay for all your closing costs. So that's, that's huge. Okay. So a big an important factor to remember is that the concession percentage is multiplied by the sales price, not the loan amount. Yeah, when you look at your purchase contract and you actually see seller concession and whatever line item that uh, that is on the purchase contract, it it, uh, it it makes sense that it's not on the loan amount, though we had to scratch your head for a second. We're like, which one is it again? Oh, yeah, purchase contract. That's what the buyer is buying. That's what the seller is agreeing to. They don't know what your loan amount is. That's right. So let's look at an, ex an example. If the sales price is five hundred thousand and the borrower is putting twenty percent down on a conventional loan, if we just kind of go back to that chart, that maximum seller concession is six percent. Six percent. So we take thirty thousand. So we take the yeah. If we took five hundred thousand multiplied by six percent. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. And just think of it: if that were a twenty-five percent down payment and it were nine percent, it'd be forty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah. And then really, to to get even. I mean, closing costs and prepaid tax and insurance are not that much money. I mean, in most cases, they're going to be, uh, if you know, closing costs are about four, four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Prepaid tax and insurance, maybe another uh, three thousand or two to three thousand in a lot of cases. The only way you're going to be able to use a big chunk like this is if you're doing a big buy down. Yeah, and so yep. just that we wanted to make sure we showed this to you. I hope you liked it. I hope that you found value in this uh, podcast. And if you do, be sure to subscribe, comment, and like. All right. Hey, thank you, folks. Thank you for watching the Mortgage Brothers podcast. If you have any questions, email us at team at azmortgagebrothers.com. And if you like this content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the Mortgage Brothers team.